about treatment options or what are the operative treatment options and then how do you I guess we can kind of go through each one as we get to it but how do you um, how do you go uh, what are some of the treatment options to treat this yeah so it goes back to that that staging system that we talk about we'll, we'll talk specifically about the slack staging so you know in that in that stage one where there's that radial styloid and the and scaphoid arthritis, but there's not that scaphoid fossa and proximal pull. You have a little more option there if the scaphoid is reducible, because normally they come in flexion, but if you ulnar deviate, if they come out of flexion back into a native, more extended position, then your options are there to do things such as a styloidectomy with a reconstruction of the SL, right? So our goal is to prevent further arthritis when it's only at um, the styloid. So let's see if any of these uh, pictures. So yeah, so there you see the slack uh, with the styloidectomy. The problem is, is if you don't reconstruct the SL uh, ligament, then it's not really gonna do you much help. So generally in my hands, it's both the radial styloidectomy as well as the SL reconstruction because you can't do the repair because it's been so long. If you just do the radial uh, styloidectomy, you haven't really stopped the progression. The nice thing is it's a quick and easy recovery and it doesn't really change their motion much. Um, but, you know, in the next year or two, you may be having a, another conversation about, hey, why didn't we do more? Right. So for our stage one slacks, where, you know, most of the, our pathologies kind of, you know, at the, the radial styloid between there and the scaphoid when you're doing your ligament reconstruction after you do a styloidectomy are you just using are you just using anchors or how do you do that reconstruction i'm, I'm sure there are many systems out there but um how do yeah you do reconstruction? So, yeah that's that's the million dollar question i'll tell you as far as oit <laughs> as far as oit is concerned they try and avoid this because this is very much kind of the art of wrist surgery because there's a lot of in-betweens and it's difficult you know, there's the uh, modified Brunelli where you take some of the FTR and you weave it, weave it through the scaphoid and then around to the lunate. There's also companies out there that have more of an all internal slash dorsal where uh, using push locks and a strip of tendon, you can kind of reconstruct it, which is where I've started going to more often uh, when it's the appropriate patient. Okay. But and, yeah, go ahead. No, but for the OIT, I, 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 you know, I kind of go through this with all of our residents every year, as well as uh, the graduating residents. I'd like to talk to them about their board. Haven't really heard too much stage one just because it is up in the air and difficult to treat. Right. Okay. And when you do a, the radial styloidectomy, do you ever do those for, for snack wrists? And do you do anything with the, the, the scaphoid at, the, at that point? So, yeah. So with the, the snack wrist, so back to my my spoon analogy, right? So the proximal pull on a snack wrist or on non-union is still coupled with the lunate by the SL, right? So that proximal pull is actually kind of in a much more normal spoon position than the SL. So that's why you tend to see less arthritis there until the later progression. So one theory is, is you do a distal pull excision of the scaphoid as well as the styloidectomy. And what that does is it, it's kind of similar to the slack wrist styloidectomy where it's taking the arthritis away with the hope that the arthritis on the scaphoid fossa uh, doesn't present itself till much later. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and so these, you know, this, this type of treatment algorithm is going to be mostly for our, our stage one um, patients with mostly, again, that, that the pathology between the radial styloid and the scaphoid. Are there any other treatment options that you may consider in patients that had these stage one um, slacks, uh, snack injuries? Yeah, so there, there's something that uh, some recent literature actually talks about, and that's called an AIN and a PIN nerectomy. We know at the level of the joint uh, that the PIN and the AIN is proprioception and sensory only. It's already innervated all the, the musculature uh, proximal to the wrist. So the thought being is if I can take away your pain, you don't really care as much about your arthritis. And so you do a dorsal approach and remove about a centimeter of section of the posterior interosseous, go through the interosseous space and then take out the anterior interosseous, another uh, centimeter of that nerve. 
and it decreases the pain. Some people say 70, some people say 90 or more. I use this in the occasional uh, like firefighters or police officers where they have arthritis and if they have a fusion of their wrist or any uh, hardware in place that they can lose their active duty status. Mm. So this is something you can say, hey, we're gonna try this. I normally inject them first to see if they get relief for it. So we can kind of say, hey, this is the kind of relief you get. But we can remove the AI and PIN. It's limited risk and it may buy you a couple of years or even more. Okay, and just, just out of curiosity, when you inject that, are you injecting in the clinic and are you using like an ultrasound or is this something you're doing in the OR? Why are you, how are you injecting these patients? You just use some lidocaine, you know, or any type of local anesthetic? Yeah. So, so I like to do, uh, just use lidocaine, just 2% lidocaine. You can, you can use Marcaine to have it last a little bit longer and then you can do it freehand or you can do it under ultrasound. You'll feel often when you go through the, the interosseous. Uh, space into the anterior compartment. Mm, okay. And again, so this is another treatment algorithm for our stage one um, slack slash snack wrist. You know, we talked about the radial stylodectomy and then now we, we talked about wrist denervation or neurectomies. Is there any anything else that you go for our stage one patients or, or do we move on to our stage two or uh, as far as operative treatment options? Yeah, I mean, those are generally the, the main stage, you know, when you're talking about uh, a snack wrist. I recently had a 19-year-old who injured a playing football when he was thir uh, 13, so six years previously, and he had a, a stage one snack wrist with a proximal pole. So there you can't take out the distal pole because there's only a small proximal pole left and you can get collapse of the midcarpal. So I did a, what's called a Satorianus, or I did a vascularized pedicle to the scaphoid as well as the scaphoid, or as well as the styloidectomy, A, to remove that arthritis point, but B, hopefully to get it to unite just because he is 19 and, and so young. 